This video is going to get into the topic of machine learning and neural networks, which sound a little intimidating to people. So we're going to break it down, make it really simple to get started in these concepts without feeling overwhelmed. We're actually going to solve a common de developer problem, uh, which I've had to face several times in over the years. Um, we're going to solve it with machine learning uh, in a couple lines of code. Uh, so here's the problem, which I've had to do several times, is that as somebody's using a color picker to real time change their text uh, or their background, Background, that text needs to change from white to black, depending on whether that background is dark or light. Uh, so we're going to make a machine learning program that determines whether any color a user picks is dark or light. Um, which when you get into kind of coding this um, programmatically with an algorithm the way you would normally do it, um, it's not so straightforward because pure red needs light text, pure green eh, kind of needs dark text, pure yellow definitely needs dark text. Uh, so these different hues actually are not so straightforward whether they need a light or dark uh, piece of text. So let's get into the machine learning piece of it. And again, it's not very intimidating. Uh, we'll start by installing brain.js, which is a very easy to use machine learning library for nodes. So NPM, I already have it installed, so this should be pretty quick here. Brain.js is installed. Again, that's not brain, it's brain.js. Brain is an older deprecated no longer maintained version, which there's a story behind that that you don't need to know. Uh, so now we can kind of import that here. Again, brain.js, not brain. Um, and so what you want to do at this point is you just want to create a neural network and then run two commands against it. So we're going to go network equals brain dot neural. There we go. And we're actually going to do new brain dot neural network. And then we're going to network.train. We're going to give it some training data. And then we're also going to go const result equals network.run. So once we've, my goodness, that autocorrect is failing me today. So we're going to give it some training data. So one of the differences between machine learning and traditional programming is traditionally, if you wanted to determine if a color was light or dark, you'd start by programming an algorithm. You'd say, hey, let's take the RGB values and let's maybe, I don't know, add them together. And if that number gets above a certain point, let's say that that is a light background. Oh, but then let's take the edge cases. Oh, it's more of a yellow. Um, and we know that that needs to be dark. So if it looks more yellow, let's do this rule. Uh, the neural network doesn't work that way at all. And you simply give it an array of values, an array of inputs, and each input has two things. It has an input and an output. So we give it historical data of, hey, for these values, historically, here's what the output has been. Think of it as like flashcards to teach a toddler the difference between cats and dogs. You get a stack of flashcards of different cats and dogs, and you show them, this is a cat, this is a dog, this is a cat, this is a dog. And eventually their brain gets it, and they can go see a new picture and know if that's a cat or a dog. That's exactly what a neural network is going to do. It simulates the behavior of a human brain. So uh, with brain.js, it expects values between one and zero. So an input can be one or more values and an output can be one or more values. You know, So we could say, hey, one equals one and train it a bunch of times. And then we could train it to say, hey, when you give it a zero, then that's an output of zero. And then our neural network could tell the difference between ones and zeros. Okay, that's kind of pointless. Uh, something more useful might be, hey, uh, let's try to tell the difference between children and adults. So let's say we have a 60 inch, 150 pound person. The output will be one for positive for an adult. Uh, let's say we have a 30 inch, I don't know what a 30 inch person is, 60 pounder maybe? That's gonna be a zero, that's a child. And then you give it a bunch of real world data um, and that's considered trained. And then down here, we could give it some other information. Let's say we got a 70 inch, 200 pounder, and that should tell us, uh, hey, one, that's an adult. Let's go ahead and try actually running this here. Let's save that result there. And let's go node app. And you can see, hey, we got a 31% chance that that's an adult. Now, a 31% uh, guesstimation or accuracy level that we're dealing with an adult, that's not very good. So let's say we gave it some more training data. Let's say we had a 73 incher, 250 pounder, and that was an adult. Let's, let's see the difference here. There we go, now it's a 67% chance that we're dealing with an adult. So our network became more accurate with the same data just because we gave it 
more historical data points. So your network is only as good as you're able to create your data. That's one very, very important thing with machine learning. Uh, most of the trick is coming up with data that can predict accurately what an output and outcome will be. Um, another thing here is we can also change this to objects, which is a little more clear. We could call this height and we could call this weight. And then your output here could be, um, we could say adults is one. And so that's, that's a little bit easier of a way uh, to make it easy to read as you're doing these applications. And then you can pass height and weight in and our result will look a little bit differently. Now it'll say adults, 92% confidence that we're dealing with an adult. Um, so that's, that's Brain.js. Now let's use it to solve our problem of, is this a light color or is this a dark color? Um, the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna change our inputs to be RGB. And then we're gonna say, is the output light one or is it dark one? And so all we have to do is give it some training data uh, by picking some of our own colors, looking at the RGB values, and we can easily convert RGB into something between zero and one by dividing it by 255, because RGB colors are between zero and 255. So if we divide it by 255, 255 becomes one, zero stays zero, and 120 is somewhere in between zero and one. Uh, so I've gone ahead and done that. I've made this RGB data set by just picking some colors and dividing all the numbers by 255 and saying, is it a light color or a dark color? So here's my data set now. Let's go ahead, copy and paste this. And I'll strip this last one off the list here. So I know that this is light. Let's go ahead and comment that one out. And let's go ahead and paste our new RGB value in here. And let's see what we get. Node app, it says, hey, 95% confident with just five training values, 95% confident that you are giving me a light color right here. Awesome. So my neural network is working good and it can predict whether a color is light or dark. Uh, so now we can go over to our little HTML and plug in our code and we should be working here. So let's go ahead and copy all this uh, code right here. And so here's my app right now. I have an input and a div example, and I have an event listener for that input to change. And whenever it changes, I'm changing the background. So now I need to also change the text. So let's kind of bring our stuff in here. Let's uh, make a const RGB equals, I have this little helper function here that I got off Stack Overflow for how to convert to RGB. So it's gonna convert hex to RGB, and I'm also dividing them all by 255 and rounding them to two decimal places. That's what this is right here. So basically just getting an RGB value. Um, so get RGB E dot target dot value. So whenever you change that input right there, I'm going to get the value in the RGB numbers. Let's console log that. Let's go ahead and take a look. Yep, there's my RGB values, excellent. And so now all I need to do is create that neural network, train it, give it this RGB value, and whatever the output is, I'll know if it's light or dark. So let's uh, come in with my brain neural network. I'm also importing brain.js right here from unpackage.com, which is basically NPM. So I am creating a new neural network. I'm training the neural network. And let's go ahead and get our results by running RGB, which is our RGB values. Let's go ahead and console log that. Console log that result. So now I'm console logging the result of whether the color is light or dark. And you can see that I'm getting all my outputs here. So I could either say, hey, if light is larger than dark, then we know it's light, but I can also have brain.js do that for me by saying brain.likely, give it RGB and give it the network that I'm dealing with. And that will do that exact same thing for me. So now let's go ahead and pull this up. And you see now it says dark, light, dark, light, dark, light. Excellent. So all I have to do at this point is say example.style.color is Result is dark. If the result is dark, then we're gonna return white text. Otherwise, we're gonna return black text. So that's going to set the text color, determining if it's a dark or light background. 
Let's see how it goes. Oh, there we go. We've got dark. We've got light, dark. Excellent. It's toggling right how it needs to. Let's check out some of these weird edge cases. Okay, yellow seems to be doing some tricky stuff here. So I'm going to take a data point that is wrong. Let's take that data point here. Let's let's console log the RGB values here. Let's go find that wrong data point here, and we'll have our program fine-tuned here within just a moment. Let's find that data point. So instead of adding more algorithm, more to the algorithm, more math, more stuff like that, I just have to go in here and add another use case with an outcome um, and just train it a little bit better. So I'm going to give it this. I'm going to say that that is a light background. We want dark text. So now it's trained. Let's Let's see what we have now. There we go. Much more how I would expect it to work. Uh, so instead of solving some strange edge cases, you can see I got another kind of weird, quirky area there. Instead of solving edge cases, I just try to find quirky spots in the data and train my data better. Okay, I have this little quirky flash of light here. Maybe I'll just say that this data point here is a dark background. Let's do make that a dark background. And within moments, we've basically been able to solve this problem that would have been pretty frustrating to solve in code. There we go. Quirkiness is gone. Looks like all those quirky possibilities are gone. Let's see what it does when you start it's pulling out the hues. Yeah, it definitely does what we expect it to do. So there you go. That's how to get involved in machine learning, how to use it to solve some issues that that might not be quite as fun to solve using traditional programming methods. So hope this helped you out. Hope it gave you the confidence to get into machine learning and have a good day.